Check it out. It's an Impala. You see that? That's the mechanics block in half the view. I'm not that big. There, see, now you can see the whole car. Oh. Look at that. I'm oh, sorry, 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 I'm blocking a little bit. Here. There you go. We got most of the AC to finish up in this video. Some lines to do. We got to put the evaporator in where the stock heater core goes. I got to be careful how I do that, don't I? <laughs> Just trying to figure out what you're doing. <laughs> I got it. And then we have um, three new gauges for in the middle of the dash in front of the steering wheel. We did some work in between last video and this video, so we'll show you that later on. But first, got a race car? Oh, I just got passed by a Prius. <laughs> first, let's get into the AC and um, yeah, removing the old box. So the old box. let's get into it. So I'm gonna have to drop this inner fender down a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna take it all the way out to get enough room to get the, the blower motor out of here on the outside box here. So I'm gonna loosen up the inner fender and then uh, I don't have to worry about the hood because it has a bracket here on the fender and it's bolted to the firewall. It only has one bolt to the inner, so the hood will be okay. So I'm just gonna drop down the inner fender here, hopefully in the back, get enough room to sneak this box out of here. So we can't, we can't sneak it out. We get all the bolts and everything out of the inner fender here, but because of this bracket, it's not gonna let me. It's not gonna let it come out of the lip. So it looks like we're gonna have to take the hood off. So you see we got the hood off. Wow. Now I got the two bolts here on top and the two on the firewall. Get this bracket out of the way so we get this inner fender out. Here's the blower. Here's the blower. Oh, man. That bad boy. Turbo. Whew. Boost. This inner fender didn't want to cooperate. We should have done the heater box, I guess, first because the headers came right underneath the inner fender, so they were in our way. So we couldn't drop it down like we're, we'd normally be able to. So the inner fender was not helping. This thing, I don't think this box has been off of the car. I think they, they painted it on there, but it's got some bad crusties in here. It's definitely been leaking for a while. So I'm gonna go on the inside now. I'm gonna finish taking these cables out here for the two cables. Hello there. Hello. We got it. We got it out. Oh, here it is. This is all you get on the inside here. Had one more cable and one bolt over here that held it on the inside. Oh, and the resistor. Got the controls all out here. The whole, the whole assembly. Just unplug the knobs are gonna fall off. Just have the blower switch, harness, get a bulb, three cables. Got that all, got that all out of the way. This has uh, four screws to hold it in here. You got two on the bottom of the dash and two on top. So next I'm gonna take out these gauges. So these are the gauges that we're gonna be replacing here. So we have uh, the clock, this is optional. Some of this, sometimes this is a dummy, and then we just have the hot cold, and then the fuel level. And these are the gauges that we're gonna be putting in, in place. I think it looks pretty trick. I think it's gonna look pretty factory. So we're gonna put these in here. So we got, like I said, we have a oil pressure, and then we have the water temp, and the fuel level, still in the, still in the box. It's brand new. But they're all, they're all electric. So these ones are opened up because I had to get the centers out. So they're all electric deals. So like I said before, I used the original wires, I'm not adding any wires because it already has the oil pressure sender comes into the dash here for the for the idiot light on the dash. So I'm just going to take the, make the bulb out for the idiot light so it doesn't illuminate and then I'm going to tee that wire into the gauge so I already have my sender and then the same for the um, water temp. It already has the hot coals right here and then obviously the same on the on the fuel level. So we'll just be removing the clock so it won't have a clock anymore. So I'm going to take these three gauges out. There's no sense, it's kind of hard to see it because it's not too bad to pull this whole dash out at this point especially, but I think it'd still be easier just to pop them out with the dash still in the car. I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna do that right now. We'll come back, we'll show you. We'll put these guys in here. Lots of hard work and perseverance. Later. So we got the, got the gauges out here. This one's kind of cool on the clock. It's got some sort of signatures on it. Kind of interesting. It's got a little September of uh, 1961. The clock is an option. Well, it is in the... I think it's an option in all of them. I know the Bel Air Biscaynes don't, don't really ever have the clock. Look how faded that guy is. Look, he's making gas just right there. Filling it up. So um, these gauges, 
I couldn't remember if they were bigger or smaller when I ordered them as the factory ones, but come to find out they're a little bit smaller. They kind of fall, fall in the hole here. But there's a bezel you can get that takes up that, that slop. It's a little black bezel. So I'm gonna have to order the, the bezel. It's pretty, pretty cool though how they're all the short sweep electric gauges so it kind of matches the speedo. Kind of cool. All the same style. Makes it look really good. So I'm glad we checked that out so we know. So now we're going to move back on to the air conditioning. We're going to get the blower cover and the evaporator box, everything block off, installed. Get the evaporator all up in there. Let me show you what I'm work it, working with here. Let me show you. So we've got the other, the other box here of the AC stuff. This is what we're going to be putting in. So we got the brackets for the evaporator box, and then we got the little blower block off. My opinion, this is a little cheesy, but it's an easy way to cover the blower hole. It's got, it's a circle, and it's got a little bracket that goes in behind, in first behind this, and then it just has a bolt in the center that seals it up. All right, that's how they cover up the blower hole. The firewall side has this little plastic cover. This is the engine side, and then this side here, so it must have a little relief for the evaporator box. In my opinion, a little cheesy, but this is how the, the, the kit comes. A smaller glove box shrinks down a little bit because of the HVAC box. It's a little bit bigger, the style of it, so you lose a little bit of your glove box. So this is what we want to get mocked up next, is the whole evaporator set up here. Oh, it's stuck. Yeah like a big booger. Why would you say that? So this is what I was talking about. They have little mode doors on the on the new box here. Instead of the cable operated doors you would do manually. This has a little electronic, so it has a little module on it. But what I want to do now is I want to get the brackets on it. And then we want to rough in the heater core and the evaporator lines. So it's hard lined on the inside through the firewall. So we're going to set this all up. Okay, between the last clip and now, it has been a while, hence why the Impala is over here rather than over there. We got the box all together, let me show you that really quick. We got the brackets and everything on it, the hard lines for the coolant, we got the AC hard lines, and then the other coolant one right there. We got one of the mounting, mounting deals is right here where it mounts to, and then it mounts right here. So both of these are through the far wall, and there's one more mounting point is underneath the dash on the inside. It goes right here. You got the hole right there, and the hole on this side. So you got two, two that mount through the far wall, and then the other ones use that little bracket. We had to knock this factory vent out from underneath the dash. As you can see, the master mechanic knocking it out right here. So that was on the instructions. You have to knock this out, and then this little defroster vent goes in place of it. It's a little plastic deal. This little deal, this little bracket takes over the place. So right here, is where the factory speaker mounted to. So now this takes over its place right there underneath the dash. So we're gonna get these put back in, this bracket, that defroster vent, and then this, and then we're gonna move on to putting the box in. So let's get on to it. So to begin with doing this AC install, we had to block off the blower motor, which we showed that earlier. So we got that installed already. It says in the AC instructions right here to use silicone Apply quarter inch bead of silicone around the mating surface. This is silicone right there. So instead of using silicone, we got a factory gasket and then we cut it off and then made it fit around with the blower motor. So we think it fit better. Now that the blower motor is blocked off, blower motor hole, I should say, we'll throw in the AC now. And we aren't AC experts, so we're, we're really reading the instructions. We're AC experts. We're not aftermarket install experts. Yes, there's a big difference. Even though it says it bolts right in, it doesn't bolt right in. So we got the, got the box installed in, in the inside under the dash. There's still another bracket I need to put on it. 
but it's it's pretty much all, all done installed. This cover's a little, eh, not, not a big fan of the cover. It needs to be a little bit more, more rigid of a plastic, I guess. I don't like how they want you to put silicone in there, no gasket, and you don't really have room for bolts. I try to use a factory gasket, but then the, the bolts they supplied are too short, and if you get them longer and they squish down, and then they can hit the box in the inside. It's kind of a, that's where they do it. That comes with the box. But anyways, nevertheless, we got the, the heater hoses on it. We got a little valve in here. I still need to put a bracket up here to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't hit the belt. I'm gonna put a bracket right here and, and hold these hold them in place and maybe one on this side too to keep it from rubbing the belt. There's supposed to be a pressure switch in here. It comes with a pressure switch, but there's nowhere for it to go. So I'm in the middle of contacting Vintage Air and seeing how they are supposed to do that. It has the, the switch up front here in the receiver dryer. This is like the, the high pressure or low pressure switch that shuts it off. So the, this switch here that activates the clutch, the cooling fans, um, it's supposed to be in a line. Supposed to be a spot for it. There's no, there's no spot for it. This hard line here, and then this one here, uh, they're not tight yet. So you still, still loose. I'm in the middle seam where they want you to put that exactly. They don't show it in the diagram. Good old Mark, he's all excited. He's all, he likes to keep adding stuff. So we added some more stuff. So we got these. Uh, he added the little, little headlight brows here. Pretty cool. And he added the little halos and headlights. And of course, all the original clips were broken, so we had to order new adjuster clips. Check this out, let me, let me turn them on for you. You gotta see it, you gotta see it. You gotta, you gotta, take, you gotta take it all in, you gotta see it. Like a little parking light, a little parking light action. Then you got, then you got like a little bit, a little bit of the sun. Then you go blam, and you got all the sun. It's pretty trick, pretty nice stuff. Gotta be able to see where you're cruising. All right, so the master mechanic's holding the gauges right here, and check this out. So here is one of the gauges. Man, those are some nice looking gauges. But anyways, this is how it comes um, out of the box originally. So here's the gauge, and this is the little bracket ad adapter, whatever you want to call it, that it goes to to bolt down underneath the dash. But like we said, since the diameter or circumference of this gauge is, <laughs> since the circumference of this gauge is too small for the dash where it's going, we got these rings right here. See? So these rings, they're sitting, the other two are sitting in there right now. I'll get up close right now and you can see they're sitting there with the rings and it kicks out the angle a little bit. I think they'll look, they look good. It actually looks really good. When you're sitting right here in the car, it looks really good. So this is how, this is how we set it up with these rings. So we slide the ring on like so, okay? Then you, you get at the right angle, uh-huh. Just like that. And then this bracket goes on next, but unfortunately this bracket hits the rings right there. So we're gonna need to shorten this a little bit and kick it at an angle to sit flush. So this isn't used anymore because this little bracket comes with the rings. So I don't know what smart guy engineered this. I don't know if it's more universal than anything. That would be my guess because everything seems to be universal. That's what we're gonna do right now. Let's put these gauges in. automobile um can you take can you take the wheel um i don't need the wheel i just need to know why you're oh, going so fast we're not going anywhere we're just sitting here so you can see we have the uh the column out we'll go we'll go into that we'll show you why here in a little bit i just wanted to show you that we got the gauges all installed here all done i think they're really nice they look, they look good a good angle you see we got them all all ready to go here man we got, oh, here sorry let me, give, let me give you some light look at that huh look at the classic old school look you put some gas in it, run a little low. Well, if you weren't flooring it, man, we'd have some gas in this thing. So let me let me explain to you what's going on with this column. So we also, he's adding a tilt tilt uh, column. It's still gonna be a column shift, but it's got a tilt wheel and obviously it is chrome. So there's a little bit of changing to that because of the, the style of the, where the shifter's located. So he's lower on the column and then it's um, splined. This has an aftermarket gearbox in it, a power steering gearbox. So they already changed the shaft to a spline shaft, and then they had one U-joint on there at the gearbox. So more than likely, this will be this, the right length. I'll just have to get another U-joint. I'm gonna get a new 
gasket here on the bottom, because this thing, by the time I get it off of here, it's already starting to crack and come apart. You see the neutral safety switch is lower on the column. This one's up here. And then the, the whole plug for the turn signals and indicator and all that, all that jazz is uh, different. And then also we're uh, fitting some fender skirts. We're going full old school low rider. Low rider. I just noticed something on this, on this fine column here. There's no indicator. Like this guy here uh, has a nice indicator on top here. This Park, thing. neutral, reverse, drive. It's got a hazard switch. It's got your turn signals. It's got your tilt, but there is no indicator. <laughs> we might uh, be at a standstill here. Let me contact the owner and see what he thinks about that. All right, so we contacted the owner. We talked to him and we got it figured out. We got some parts showing up. But in the meantime, we're gonna show you what the master mechanic did off camera. And we're also going to charge the AC system. Here's our AC machine that I think we haven't shown before. And this thing is money, man. Money! Before we get to the AC, you can see that the master mechanic mounted the MSD ignition box right here on the firewall. The instructions say it recommends not to mount it close to the engine. It says to keep it away from heat. We've seen plenty of people put it here on the firewall or like on the inner fender in the past and there hasn't been any issues with it, so. We went ahead and put it right here on the firewall. I mean, you can't go wrong with it. It looks amazing sitting right there on the firewall. We did figure out the little switch. So that switch that was in here earlier, this one that we showed is supposed to be for if you have a mechanical fan set up. And this one is for an electric fan set up where it has, it has two extra wires that go to the mechanical fans. So when the AC compressor engages, the fans can come on and it keeps the condenser cool here in front of the radiator. But this one doesn't have any wires compared to the other one. And since the mechanical fan, you know, runs all the time, it gets spun by the engine, then the fans don't need to come on at all. So the condenser is always being cooled by the mechanical fan. So we got that switched out. We have the correct one in and he's gonna finish wiring that up. But right now, let's hook up the AC machine and we will get this charging. We've run into a vacuum right now. You always need to pull into a vacuum before you, you charge it. And it's longer to do um, anytime the system has been exposed to air. We try to keep this as sealed as much as possible as we do the process of putting it together. But um, as you can see, everything gets opened up to hook it up and you get air in there. And so you just want to suck it down. Um, we did it for 25 minutes. It's pretty much just a generic, it's like a baseline of a, of a amount of time that you want to do to put it into a vacuum. But you pretty much boil the, any moisture in a, in a vacuum is what you're doing. So you want to get any condensation or anything out of the system. And then it also checks for leaks. So we're pulling it down. So right now we're looking good. We don't have any big leaks. So far we got a 30 inches of vacuum. So we're strong, strong system so far. So once it's done for the 25 minutes, we got uh, what, 18, 18 minutes left. It'll, it'll do a time, it's like five minutes or something. It holds it and then measures and makes sure you don't have any leaks, pretty much what it's doing. If you lose vacuum in a certain amount of time, then we have a leak somewhere and that's a whole nother can of worms. We got to find it, but I think we're pretty, pretty good so far. So in, in, in general, I mean, during the vacuum, it's not going to bother anything, but in general, you don't want to touch the AC machine while it's doing its thing because it has a scale in it and that's how it knows how much you charge into the system. I mean, right now we're in a vacuum, but you don't want to keep rocking it because it, it's just harder on the scale. So just, just a little tidbit. Somebody says, hey, don't touch the AC machine. It doesn't mean to go over and give it a bump. I don't know why people always do that. And now it only hurts when you touch it. <laughs> touch. Do I have to follow you all day? And then, like I said previous, I think in the first video on this car where we talked about having a, a Mallory Unilite COM 9000 distributor with an MSD, you can run it. But one of the problems is, is uh, the COM 9000 and the Unilites use a little eye for the pickup. It's not a magnetic. They don't like voltage. That's why you always need to run a ballast resistor or some sort of um, resistor wire or something in general to run them or else to burn the eye out. So the way I did this is, is I use the original resistor wire in the system that already reduces the voltage down. And that's what I hooked up for the ignition source to the distributor. And then now I'm working on the ignition source for the box, which needs to be a 12 volt ignition source. So this needs to be reduced. This needs to be the full, the full voltage. So I just incorporated the choke with it. So I'm, I'm got the choke here. We got our ignition source. I'm gonna run this inside. And I'm gonna go over to the fuse box under the dash and we're gonna get a, um, a full cranking position on cranking uh, one of the lugs on the fuse box. And we're gonna get our 12 volts to the ignition. And then at that point, this thing's ready to, ready to fire. We're gonna fire it up. So while this AC's 
Machine's doing its deal, sucking it down, doing that. I'm gonna hook up the last couple wires, get it finished, finished, hooked up, we're gonna start it. Okay, the AC system is charged and the AC machine is out of the way. I had 30 inches of vacuum and I held it for long enough. And the instructions on Vintage Air called for 1.8 pounds to charge the system with. It's all good to go. So we'll test that out later when we get the ducking underneath the dash done. Tell him, Master Mechanic, what are you doing before we start it? Well, I'm a little worried about this uh, heater hose right here. And I'm going to put a clamp on it, but I don't have the clamp on there yet. So I'm going to put this little zip tie on here, just a little temporary, just to make sure this hose doesn't doesn't rub on the belt right here until I get the clamp on there. I'm just gonna put a little tension on it, sucking it back out of the way. So now it won't be rubbing on the belt. We change the oil in it, so the oil's good. The water coolant is full. Should be good to go. So we're gonna crack the door and we're gonna give it a fire. My eyes! All right, Master Mechanic wants me to sit in the car to crank it. So we're gonna sit right here. Man, look at those gauges. Man, those are good looking gauges. So we got no column. He says he thinks it has it in park. So I'm just gonna have my foot on the brake just in case it jumps ahead. And here we go. Seems to be in park. I don't feel any tension. What do you think, sir? Wow. Yeah, I definitely had some sort of exhaust leak over here. How's our coolant look? It's still full. Well, down uh, here, I mean, it's right there, but. The thermostat hasn't opened yet. No. Probably the uh, heater cord is not full. I'm sure it has some air in it, but it's still full right there. Man, that's a good sound. Listen to that. All right, Master Mechanic's got the timing light out. Let's see what, what's going on. Let's get a on What do you guys think with those new flow masters that we put on like three videos ago or something but six months ago for us or something the thing that's crazy is that we've had this car we've been working on this car for the owner longer than he's owned the car this car has been in our possession in our shop and everywhere with us for longer than the owners even had it and it's almost done we were hoping to put the rest of the car into this video and didn't really work out that way so we're gonna have one more video where we will finish the ac we will get it aligned we'll go for a drive so hit the subscribe button if you love 62 impalas hit the like button if you like 62 impalas and comment down below that you like 62 impalas i'll see you guys next time